Hello grade 10s, in this video we're going to be looking at some longitudinal past paper questions. Let's jump right in with a multiple choice. Remember to stay throughout the video because I give loads of teacher tips. I show you where learners get marks wrong or taken off usually. I show you how to get the most marks in a question, silly mistakes to avoid and things like that. So 1.1, if the distance between two consecutive compressions in a wave is decreased, which one of the following will increase when the wave speed is kept constant? Now, the first thing that you need to understand is what is the distance between two consecutive compressions? Remember, in a longitudinal wave, we have a compression and then we have a rarefaction. And then we have compression, which is an area of high pressure and a rarefaction. So a distance between two consecutive compressions, that distance is what we refer to as the wavelength. So they're speaking about decreasing the wavelength so if we decrease the wavelength they are asking uh, which one of the following will increase if i keep wave speed constant now the first thing that i want you to think of when selecting an answer for this question is what formula do you know that can help you work out this question that has these variables in it so what formula do you know that has wave speed in it wave speed is v that has wavelength in it and that has one of these in it. Well, when talking about longitudinal waves, you should know this formula. The wave speed of a wave is equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength of the wave. Now remember, if speed is constant, so if I keep that value the same, frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional, which means that if the one goes up, the other one goes down by the same proportion. So they're saying if the distance between two consecutive compressions is decreased, in other words, if the wavelength is decreased and speed is constant, which one of these will increase? It should be frequency. Frequency will increase. Your answer is C. And that is because of the inversely proportional relationship. But please, grade 10s, just remember that these two are only inversely proportional if speed is kept constant. And you can try it for yourself. Let's pretend that speed is 20 and my wavelength is 2. What is my frequency? My frequency must be 10. But if I decrease my wave length, so instead of 2, let's make it 1. If speed is kept constant, so that must stay 20, what must my frequency be in order to make this equation true? That must be 20. So look what happened to wavelength. Wavelength decreased. What happened to frequency? Frequency increased. 7.2, the highest frequency that a human ear can hear is 20 kilohertz. First things first, you need to know that 1,000 hertz is equal to 1 kilohertz. Okay, that's just a conversion that you need to know. You need to be aware of that. And a dolphin produces sound in order to locate prey in water. So what happens is the dolphin produces the sound. It travels through the water. Because remember, longitudinal waves are mechanical waves. They need a medium to travel through. So like water, travels through the water, it hits the prey, the fish, and the wave produces a sound or it, it echoes back to the dolphin. Okay, cool. If the dolphin produces sound waves of wavelengths of five centimeters, so they give me the wavelengths, it's five centimeters, you should know that we should convert wavelengths to meters. So I'll do that now. Determine by means of calculations whether the frequency produced by the dolphin can be heard by the human ear. So we're looking for frequency. The speed of sound in water is 1,480 meters per second. So they give me the speed. 1,480 meters per second. Obviously, in order to do a question like this, you need to know wavelength is represented by this symbol and it's 5 centimeters. You need to know that you need to convert that to meters. We're looking for frequency, that's F. You need to know that speed is V. If you see these three variables together, you should know that the formula that I'm going to be using is this one. Go to your formula sheet and you'll say, okay, cool, I'm going to use that formula. So we write our formula first, that gets you a mark. Without that, you don't get your mark. You substitute, which means you put your values in the correct place, so 1, 4, 8, Zero. I'm looking for frequency. And remember, we discussed that we need to convert centimeters to meters. So you should know 
that 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. So that means to get from centimeters to meters, you must divide by 100. So five centimeters to get it to meters, you must divide that by 100. So our wavelength, dividing that by 100, is 0, 0,05. Now remember to solve correctly, please, when you are doing your calculations. This is times 0, 0,05. So obviously we need to do the inverse, which would be 1480 divided by 0, 0,05. And we get our frequency as being 29,600 hertz. And I know that's very high, but it makes sense because these animals produce sounds with very high frequencies. So 29,000 hertz. 600 hertz and remember in the question they said the highest frequency that the human ear can hear is 20,000 hertz so this is what the dolphin makes so that's the dolphin's frequency humans can only hear 20 kilohertz okay so that is 20,000 hertz so can humans hear that no so determine whether the frequency can be heard by a human's ear you can say that no that's an N. <laughs> no, the frequency cannot be heard by human. And my reason is because 29,600 hertz, which the dolphin produces, is bigger than 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz that we can hear. Our next question is also dealing with a sound wave. And if you read the question, you can see that. So it says a boy standing between two buildings, A and B, started to call his sister that's inside building B. So his sister's in here. He wants to call her. He's standing in between the buildings. He is going to call her. He's going to emit sound waves that are going to travel in all different directions. So there will be sound waves traveling towards building A. There will be sound waves traveling towards building B. And the question actually says that the sound emitted by the boy strikes building B and returns back after 0.1 seconds. So remember, he's going to emit the sound waves. It's going to hit building B, reflect off the building, which is going to produce an echo, and that sound will return to him after a whole total time of 0.1 seconds. At the same instant, the sound produced by the boy returns back after 1.5 seconds from building A. So because of the sound waves being spread out in all different directions, we will see that the sound wave will hit both buildings and after it hits building A, it will return back to the boy after 1.5 seconds. The question winds the distance between buildings A and B. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is if we know the speed of sound, which we do, so we know V, speed of sound in A is 340 meters per second. And we know something about time, which we do we can work out what we call displacement or distance by using the following formula. So here's the formula over here. Now what's important to note is that that's not given on your formula sheet. You need to know this formula. You're also taught this formula when you deal with displacement, speed, distance, time in a later chapter. But this formula you do need to know. You also learned about speed, distance, time in maths at one, at one stage. So speed is equal to the distance divided by the time. You can use D instead of this over here. But this is basically referring to our distance. Right. So this is referring to our distance. So if you have speed, which we do have. If you have time, which we can work with this time given over here, we can work out distance. But because I have two buildings, I need to work out the distance between this boy and building B using this time over here and this boy and building A using this time over here. Then if I add those two distances, it will be able to tell me the distance between building A and B. So I'm first going to work with building B, the distance between the boy and building B. Now, what we know so far is we know that the speed of sound in A is 340 meters per second. And the other thing that we know is that, remember, boy B emitted a sound and it returned back to him after 0, 0,1 seconds. That means that including the echo, so to go there and back, it took 0, 0,1 seconds. But I don't care about the distance 
from the boy to the building and back. I just want to know how far is it from the boy to the building. So instead of using 0,1 seconds, because that's there and back, I'm just going to use half of 0,1 seconds. So I'm going to use 0,1 divided by 2. That is the time that I use. Remember, 0,1 is the time that it took to go to the building and back. But I don't want that double distance. I just want from the boy to the building. So if I want just that distance, I need to use half of the time because this time includes the echo. So it includes the bounce back. So the time that I'm going to be using is 0, 0,05 seconds. So it took 0, 0,05 seconds to the, for the sound to go from the boy to building B. Then I use this formula. So you write your formula first. You substitute in. So sound is, uh, speed of sound is 340. I'm looking for the distance. Time is 0, 0,05. You say 340 times 0, 0,05. And you get 7 meters. That means that from the boy to building B is 17 meters. You do the same thing, but you do it for building A. So building A, they gave me at the same instant, the sound produced by the boy returns back after 1.5 seconds from building A. So again, grade 10, so what that means is the time to go to the building and back to the boy was 1.5 seconds. But I just want to know what the time was to go from the boy to the building. So instead of using 1.5, I'm going to be using 1.5 seconds divided by 2. I only care about half of that sound. I don't care about the full um, 1.5. So 0 0.75 seconds. 0 0.75 seconds. And that makes sense. It took 0 0.5 seconds to reach building A and 0 0.75 seconds to go back to the boy. That's why it's 1.5 seconds in total. So my speed is 340 meters per second. My time is 0, 0.75 seconds. I use the same formula. So I'm going to write the formula again. I'm using it. You actually technically don't need to as long as you write it once, but I'm just going to write it again. This is 340. My distance is what I'm looking for. Time is 0, 0.75. So again, you go 340 times 0, 0.75, and I get my displacement as being two five five meters so what that means is that the distance from the boy to building a is two five five meters so what's the total distance you take two five five i'm going to do it at the bottom here you take two five five you add it to 17 and we get 272 meters so you'll get your mark for your formula used, substituting for building B, substituting for building A, for adding, and your final answer, that is five marks. Here we have another question for sound waves, and it says the diagram shows two sound waves measured for the same time interval. So we've got wave A, which they label over here. Let's highlight wave A in green. And then we've got wave B, which they also label clearly which is this one over here. They're measuring it for the same time interval. They don't tell us what that time interval is, but we can just pretend like, for example, five seconds or two seconds or whatever. Now, the question first once, which one of the sound waves has a higher pitch? Explain the answer. The first thing that you need to know is that in order to have a higher pitch, you need to have a higher frequency. A higher frequency. And remember, the frequency is the number of waves that pass a given point per second. So let's pretend that this to here, that is one second that passes. Let's just pretend they didn't tell me that it is. They say measured for the same time interval. They didn't tell me what the time interval is, but let's pretend it's a, it's a second. So remember, the frequency is the number of wavelengths or the number of crests or whatever that pass a given point per second. If you look at wave A, we've got one. So from here to here is one wave, one and a half waves for that certain period of time. So 1.5 waves for the green one. For the yellow one, we've got starting here, that's one wave. That's two waves. 
and a half wave. So 2.5 waves in this time interval, so per one second. So which wave do you think has a higher frequency? Which wave had more waves passing per unit time or per second in this case? And that would be wave number B or wave B. So wave B, 7.2.1, would be wave B would have a higher pitch. The reason why is wave B has a higher frequency. So there we go. That would be your answer. So wave B, it has a higher frequency. And we can tell this because more waves pass for wave B in the same given time interval. And 7.2.2, which one of the sound waves is louder? Now, you need to know that loudness corresponds to the amplitude of the wave. And remember, amplitude is the maximum displacement from the rest or the equilibrium position, which is this position over here. So which wave has a bigger amplitude? That would be wave A, which means bigger amplitude, which means louder wave. If you like this video and you'd like more waves, past paper questions, or just more past paper videos in general, please comment exactly which ones you'd like to see down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more physics and more teacher tips. I hope to see you in another video. Bye, everybody.